Hello CIS 120 class. I promised you guys a video on week one, uh, another video. I'm going to make two more, I think. So let's check it out. Let's check out the curriculum. Let's look at what's next for week one in CIS 120 computer concepts. So I click on the class here in Canvas, which is what you should do. Hopefully everybody did the discussion so you don't get kicked out of the class. The attendance requirement assignment, it looks like we've got 31 people who've done it. So that's pretty good um, because tomorrow, if you haven't done it, I'm going to um, have to drop people who haven't done it tomorrow. Okay, so on the home page, you've read my intro here. You've seen my posts here. Um, so that's good, right? Um, check out my week one video lecture. So let's take a look at this. See this announcement? There's the video recording I did on Monday. That's pretty good. All right. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go to modules. And I'm going to scroll down to week one. Right. And what we're going to talk about today is the reading on the web. I'll do a little lecture on the web. You have to do these activities and these are all done. This one, this one, this one, and this one are all done with the Cengage Unlimited MindTap um, curriculum and the Cengage Unlimited reading. So I click on the web here. I click here on you know the read module to the web. Click on this button and it should ask you to log in to Cengage with your account. If you don't have an account, create one. If you haven't paid for the account, pay for it. And then ultimately it should bring up the reading. So this is right module two, the web. So I'm going to go back here to the first page and we're going to have a little discussion about this content. All right. So I thought this would be a fun place to start with the web. Everyone knows about the web. This is a good chapter to start with. Chapter one is a little too introductory. So I thought this would be better, right? So we're going to learn about the components that make up the web, right? Since its introduction, the web, originally known as the World Wide Web, right, has changed the way we access information. Everybody uses web browsers. We browse the web today from our cell phones, but also from web browsers. Right now, I'm using Google Chrome, right? So um, the World Wide Web, right, is a part of the Internet. So a question that I used to ask students back in the day was, is the World Wide Web, is the web and the internet the same thing? And some people would say, yes, those are the same, same thing. And then some people would say no. So that's a good question that I always ask students is, is the World Wide Web and the internet the same thing? The answer is, is that the web is just a part of the internet. It's just one service on the internet. But there's lots of services that go across the internet. For instance, email. Email is a separate service that goes across the internet. What about your game platforms? Xbox, right? Um, PlayStation, your online games. All of that goes over the internet. Those are separate services, right? Today, we have, I mean, just millions, uh, billions of devices that access the internet. When the internet was first created, there was just a handful of devices on it. We're going to talk about that today, too. All right, so um, you guys know what a web page is, right? A web page was originally designed just to have text and hyperlinks to more text. So scientists wanted to publish their articles and share their articles with other scientists, right? So they said, hey, well, um, Tim Berners-Lee came up with HTML and the World Wide Web, and it was designed to link together through links pages of content so that you could just go from page to page. All right. The content of most web pages makes them visually appealing. A website is just a group of pages for a single organization. So you can have, you know, you have like the COCC website and stuff like that, right? To view a website or web page, you need a web browser. So this is what we call a client server relationship. There is a client, which is a web browser, that accesses the page on a web server. Okay, the home page is, or the start page is the first page on the site. So if I go to, let's say, 
coc.edu. Okay, this is the home page, right? This is the start page. Okay. Now, uh, what else? Ah, keeping track of web pages. A URL. Okay, a URL is the address that you put in the address bar of your web browser. Uniform Resource Locator, or URL. There's also another term called Uniform Resource Indicator, or URI. The URI is the path to the resource. So in this case, you know, forward slash student, forward slash index.html, that would be the URI. And then the URL would be, you know, the http www.cengage.com. But these pieces are fine, and we can call this whole thing a URL, and that's fine. This is the protocol, HTTP, which means Hypertext Transfer Protocol, means it's it's going to be it's going to be a web service, okay? There are other protocols like FTP or SMTP or IMAP or, you know, different services like that, different protocols that are that go across the internet. All right, the two that we're interested for today when regarding the web is HTTP and HTTPS. Now, every site that you go to today, you'll see this lock here, and that means you're on an HTTPS website. There are very few websites left that are just HTTP, right? Because, right, HTTPS, the S stands for secure. So it's being, the page is being encrypted, it's being secured by a security certificate. In other words, right here, Cengage.com, they have a certificate that basically says, hey, right, we've been issued like this certificate or think of it like a license that this is who we are. And it's verified by a company like VeriSign or Register.com or some, some third party that verifies and says, yeah, if you, can, if you have that certificate, right, if you have that certificate, this is the real deal, right? So I say, hey, connection is secure. You see here, certificate is valid. I can pop that out. And you can see here, um, issued by DigiCert. So they have a security certificate. So DigiCert is saying, hey, we've issued this security certificate. This is the real deal. You're not on a fake website. This is not somebody impersonating Cengage.com. This is the real Cengage.com as verified by DigiCert, right? That they're, now this type of activity this is what happens like every day when you have to produce your driver's license, right? When you produce your driver's license, you're verifying that you are who you are, right? And how and why do people trust it? They don't trust you, they trust the DMV. And so that's the idea. Same thing here with certificates and HTTPS websites is that, hey, you know, we're going to trust a trusted third party, just like people trust driver's licenses because they trust the DMV. Okay. So you've got here the protocol, then this is the domain name, cengage.com, okay? The service is www, meaning it's a web server. Um, .com is the top level domain name. This is the top level domain name, .com, .edu, um, .org, .net. Those are all TLDs or top level domains, right? Now, who serves this stuff? A web server. Okay, now how do you have a website? You have a website if you purchase web hosting from a web server. So if you want to create your own website, right, I'll just say, hey, I want to create my own website here. Let me throw up a notepad really quickly. Okay, what do I need? Right, I need a web server, right, also known as a web hosting account, right? So you need a web server, right? Or also known as a web hosting account. Where do you get that from? You get that from places like GoDaddy.com. Okay, so one, you need a web hosting account. Okay. Two, you're going to need, and you'll get this when you purchase your web hosting account, you're going to need a domain name, right? You're going to need a name for people to go to to reach your site, right? Because Going to an IP address, right, 69.32, right, going to an IP address is not pretty fun, right? So when people go to your website, they don't want to have to put in an IP address, 
which is kind of like your telephone number, but in this case, it's for your website, right? It's for your web hosting. You don't want to have to put in an IP address. You want to put in a domain name. So you get your domain name, right? So my name, let's say, .com, okay, or something like that. So you're going to need that. Now, you can also get the domain name from your web hosting provider, like GoDaddy. They will provide you both, all right? When you do that, they're also going to give you an IP address, which is like kind of like the telephone number for your location on the web. Now, this IP address is going to be a public IP address as opposed to a private IP address. Private IP addresses are what's behind your router at home. Public IP addresses are publicly available um, on the web, on the internet, right? So you'll need a public IP address and your name, when someone puts in your domain name, it'll take them to that IP address, to that public IP address. <laughs> Excuse me. The next thing that you'll get when you have this is you'll also get, right, you will get a basically folder on the server for your web pages. Okay, so that's what you're going to get. All of this you're going to get, let's say, from your web host, meaning let's say GoDaddy. Or in this case, right, it could be something else. So for me, I have this account, which I just started up again. I used to have a website called danscourses.com, and then I stopped paying for it. I had it for, gosh, I had it for 18 years. And then I was like, you know what, it's too expensive. I'm just going to stop paying for it. Nobody goes there. Well, people contact me every day saying, Where, what happened to your website? What happened to your website? Well, it's gone because I stopped paying for it. So now I've got to build it up again. I've got to recreate it. So that's going to be uh, tough. It's going to be hard, but I got to do it. So my web host is siteground.com. Okay. My website is my domain name is danscourses.com. I've got a web hosting plan here. And if I go to site tools here, let's go to site tools. It's going to give me some browser-based tool, tools that I can use to work with my website. Now, take a look at this. File manager. All right, file manager. Danscourses.com. Here's public HTML. This is where my site lives on the server. This is the web server, and this is my folder. And basically, my website is in this folder, public HTML. So I'll go in there. And right now you can see the web page is called default.html. So what I could do is, right, I could say, all right, I want to create a file in here. New file. And I'm going to call it index.html, which is usually the name of the, of the home page. <clears throat> and then this page right here, default.html, I can change this name to like, Let's see here. I'll just rename it to default.html.back. Right? Now let's see if this works. Now, this HTML file right here, index.html, I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to say, hi, CIS120 class. Right? And I will um, hit. Well, I want to hit save, right? So how do I save it? Oh, save. All right, there we go. So I just saved it. It's just two lines of text. Now, this is not valid HTML. This is just some text. Hi, CIS 120 class. That's not that great. Let's go over here and say danscourses.com. And there it is. Hi, CIS 120's class, right? Now, that's not such a great page. So what I'll do is I'll say Dan's Courses website will return Dan's Courses new website coming soon. And save. And then now if I go to my domain name, right? It hasn't updated. Let's open up a different browser. I'll open up Cengage here, a different browser. 
and I'll say Dan's course. Now, why didn't it update? Because my page is cached. Dan's course is new website coming soon, right? So the reason it didn't update here is that Google Chrome has saved the old version of the page. And so when I go here and I say, show me the new version, it's like, it just says, oh, I don't need to go get that. I have that in cache. It's just a home page. So I see the old site, right? So anyway, that is a quick little, um, this is a little quick intro to basically how, right? Basically how web development works. I've shown you a web server. All right, that looks pretty good. Talked about IP addresses. And we're going to have an assignment that we're going to do, and I'm going to need a separate, I'm going to need a separate um, video for it. But we're going to do an assignment where you're going to create your own web page, except you're not going to put it on a web host. You're going to create it on a website that allows you to make basically um, pages and and use HTML and CSS and JavaScript, and then see the result right there. On your little account on their website. So we're going to do this simple web page. It's going to be worth 20 points, and I'm going to show you how to do it in a separate video. All right, um, back to the reading. Let's see here. How long has this recording been? 16 minutes. That's a lot. So I'm probably going to stop this soon, and when I come back on my next video, we'll talk about top-level domains and... Yeah, that we'll talk about also some cool stuff um, based on the internet. All right, well, thanks everybody.